Good evening, everyone. A very warm welcome to all on the second day of three days international virtual workshop, which was from 28th to 30th June. Jointly organized by International Research Academy of Arts and Science, Belgrade, Republic of Serbia, and Irasa Branch, India, in collaboration with Cape Comorin Trust, India, and Lavender Literacy Club, India. Uh, the topic is academic writing and research skills. And I'll thank to all the organizers, Professor Weldick, who is the president of uh, International Research Academy of Arts and Science, Belgrade, Republic of Serbia. And many thanks to Professor Marija Masker, who is the vice president, Republic of Serbia, and Professor Vira. And last but not the least, Dr. Shelja Vasudeva, convener of this event and international coordinator, Cape Comrade Trust, India, and country director, Rasa India branch. And great thanks to Dr. Rajin Silvish, present Cape Comoran Trust for creating knowledgeable platform for, for all. Now I'll invite our first speaker. Uh, he is one Eric Tendok. He is registered and a licensed teacher in Philippines before moving to Canada. He is having vast experience of management in fast food industry and more uh, uh, fast food industry and more than 20 years he is now professional speaker and best selling author his club mentor and club coach in his toast maker organization he also works at alberta health services in the directory department of one hospital in his community and he is the highest designation in Toastmakers. He has also his own coaching and mentoring program called the Confidently Speaking Institute. Welcome, Mr. Eric. This platform is all yours. Welcome. Thank you very much, Professor Dr. Richa. Thank you very much for that wonderful introduction. And of course, I would like to say good morning from Alberta. So good I'm morning. in Alberta, Canada, <laughs> but anyway, so good yes. morning, good day, good afternoon, good evening, wherever part of the world you are. So greetings. Namaste. Namaste. Yes. So, okay. Okay, I'm going to share my screen now. Okay. Okay. Send. Dr. Richa, Professor, can you see my screen now? Yes, we can see. Okay, so what you see is communication skills. And we are here. By the way, I would like to say again, thank you to Dr. Basudiba, my friend. It's an honor to be part of this three days international virtual workshop on academic writing and research skills. So we are in day two. So thank you very much for having me here. Okay, we're going to talk about communication skill. We need to create a community of excellence through communication. I'm going to repeat that. Creating a community of excellence through communication. So when we say communication, it can be verbal, non-verbal. Visual and the visual is also most important, is because this is where we present our research. So, my topic for today is all about the importance of communication in your research. But first, I would like to deliver a simple presentation first of what is communication really, right. What's communication? Well, you can say communication is talking to a friend or sending a text message or message a friend in WhatsApp, an email. So those are simple parts of communication. When we say communication, we think of two persons in here. One is giving the message 
And the other one is receiving the message. Just like what I'm doing right now. This is a simple type of communication. I'm trying to convey a message. And on the other hand, you are trying to receive, understand, and listen to my message. So it's like you're the feedback and I'm the sender. So that's communication. But how can we really create a community of excellence through communication? How? Okay. Allow me to move on to my next presentation, which is the importance of communication. What is the importance of communication, actually? Okay. So in our daily life, communication helps us build relationships by allowing us to share our experiences, our stories, our needs, and communication help us to connect to others. So you are not just talking. You are not just speaking. You are connecting to others. So that is for me the importance of communication is to connect to others. Now, communication is the essence of life, okay? allowing us to express feelings, pass information, give information, and share your thoughts and knowledge. We all need to communicate. So always remember that. Be it in your presentation in your school, when you speak in front of your student, giving some report, and also doing your research, we need to communicate. Okay? So, some importance of communication that I can tell you here is, of course, communication is the basis of coordination. So, when you communicate, you all coordinate. So always remember that. When there's a clear communication, then there's a fluent working relationship. Okay. You may just want to write it down. Okay, number one, it's basis of com coordination. We communicate to coordinate. Number two is there will be a fluent working relationship. That's number two importance of communication number three it's the basis of your decision making in your group so you decide of one important thing in your organization so communication is the basis of decision making next one it increase your managerial efficiency so you will become more uh, efficient manager if you are in a business organization. Now, as a teacher, you are a classroom manager, right? When you're a classroom, classroom manager, then it increases your efficiency in managing your classroom. Okay, next one that I can tell about the importance of communication is, of course, it increases cooperation and organizational peace. So there will be peace in an organization. Okay? There's cooperation. Now, the last one that I can tell about the importance of communication is, of course, this one. It boosts the morale of your students. If you're a professor, teacher, instructor in a college, maybe, so it boosts the morale of your student. It also boosts the morale of your employees if you're a manager, business owner, entrepreneur. How? Through communication, you learn to appreciate your employees or your student. So it's through communication that you convey your message of appreciation. Something like, great job. You did a great job today. 
So you increase the morale of your people. Okay, next one. Why is communication important, by the way? Why is communication important? Anyone? Anyone who wants to share from here? One person. So this is an open presentation and is there volunteer? Why is communication important? So as you can see, I mentioned the importance of communication. But what is really important? Okay, so here it is. Why is communication important? By delivering your message clearly and fluently, there is no room for misunderstanding. There is no room for misunderstanding or altercation, alterization of your messages, which decreases the potential of what? It starts with letter C, conflict. That is the importance of communication. You decrease or avoid conflict through clear, concise communication. Okay? I'm going to repeat that. You avoid or decrease conflict through concise and clear communication that is the importance of communication you should avoid conflict you should avoid confusion right in your message in your research you need to write your research clearly direct concise to avoid confusion and now if there's confusion then conflict arises very simple right you just need to avoid conflict. Okay, moving on. What is effective communication and research? Okay. What is really the effective communication and research? And I have something in here. It says here, I just going to mention it to you. Well-developed presentation and communication will enhance your professional reputation, increase your ability to influence others, and it's enable you to progress your career faster and give you the confidence to network successfully. Very beautiful. It gives you a better networking advantage if you have that effective communication in your research you progress well okay your integrity will increase your reputation once you have an effective communication communication in research and that is a, a great way to your success in more research, in more presentation. But what is important here is your integrity. If you have an effective communication and research. All right. Okay. I'm I'm sure I'm very, very clear to that. Why it is effective in research. Now. You may not answer this question. How many languages can you speak? Okay. The reason why I ask this question is because in communication, we tend to not understand others as we all know we have different languages in the world. Now, I'm from Philippines, moved to Canada. I have a different language. And I need to learn the language of Canada. Now that I'm in Canada and a citizen of this beautiful country, if I go to Serbia, then people in Serbia will not going to understand me, right? Much more, 
I can also understand the language of Serbia. How I wish I know the your language. Now, if I go to India, same thing. I don't understand the language of India. I may know some words like namaste, but the communication is not clear unless we speak or talk together in one common language. That's maybe English. Or sometimes we need an interpreter. Someone will interpret us what we're saying so that there will be a clear communication. One time, I was in presentation in Georgia and there's someone interpreting my presentation. Isn't it nice? There's an interpreter. So you see, what I'm trying to point out here is our main objective when we deal with communication is we need to be clear. People should understand us. That is our main objective in communication. Okay. So the languages, there are hundreds of languages around the world, or maybe thousand, because in one country alone, one country alone, like the Philippines, there are like 170 languages and dialects. So you see, that's why probably there's no peace and war is evident. It's because we don't understand each other. So how many languages can you speak? The more languages you speak, the better. But the most important here, whatever languages you use, you should be clear, concise, direct, easy to understand. Same thing in your research. Your writing should be easy to understand. Right. So that is conveying clear communication in verbal, visual, nonverbal. Okay. I'll discuss to you the difference between the among the three. Okay. What is verbal, nonverbal, and visual? I already mentioned that the visual example of visual is your research. That's a visual. Okay. That's why we're here in a three-day conference, is because we're trying to give presentations and different speakers were invited to give presentations on the importance of communication, the importance of research. And moving on, this is the same slides presentation that I used a few days ago when I was in the Mindanao State University. And there's a correlation and coordination. My topic in that university is the role of communication in research, in organization, in a classroom. But here, the importance. Now, if you know the role of communication, then clearly you understand the importance of communication. And a while ago, I already discussed the, some of the importance of communication. And also, I, or, I already discussed the importance of communication in your research. Now, we discussed that our main objective in communication is to be clear, to avoid conflict. Now, in communication, it is not what you said. It is what the audience think you said. Remember that. Now, into writing, it is not what you wrote, okay, or write. It is what the audience thinks what you wrote. There you go. That is communication. The concept of this slides alone is make yourself clear. It's your responsibility to be clear. Okay, so that is communication all about. It's not what you said or what you write. It is what your audience or your reader thinks what you said or what you write. So I'll give you a simple situation. When you go to a fast food restaurant, you order to the front counter or maybe in a restaurant uh, to the server. 
you gave the food that you want to the ser server and that person did not understand you so there's two reasons why that person did not understand you number one the other person is not really listening but of course since you're the person who communicate the problem maybe is you were not able to convey your message very well you're not clear so in communication be it verbal or visual be it in public speaking or writing a research you need to be clear by using simple words as much as possible okay just use simple words there's no point using deeper words if the person doesn't understand it right there's no you just be yourself when you communicate the truth is all of us or most of us communicate but we don't connect that's the truth what does it mean by that most communicate but not all connect To be able to do that connection, then always remember this. Communication is not what you said. It is what the audience think you said. That is the concept of communication. Your primary objective is to be understood. Friends, leaders, ladies and gentlemen, that is your mission. To be understood. Am I clear to that? You need to be understood. Okay. So, in this example of my slide presentation, the sender is thinking of pizza. Now, if the receiver received that, what you want to try to say is pizza, then there will be a feedback. Oh, that pizza, it's delicious. Now, if you're trying to convey a message about pizza and then the receiver understood it like a donut, oh, it's donut. Do you think there's a clear communication? Apparently, there's no clear communication, right? Okay, if you want to be a speaker, you have to speak. If you want to write a research, then you have to write. Okay. So that is what I meant. So in writing your research, eventually you speak about it. So that's two way. You're writing to be understood. And then you present that writing through public speaking, through presentation. You still need to be clear. Now, in your research, you need to organize. Okay. How do you organize? You need to make an outline of your research. You develop the opening of your research. And then you draft the body. So whatever research you want to do. And the next is you transition to your conclusion. One way to be clear in your research is you need, you need to be organized. So organization is very important part. It plays an important role in your research. Same true in presentation, okay? Opening, the body of your message, and just the conclusion. So that's, you should be, organization takes place. You need to be organized. Next one, after organization, so... First, we discuss about what is communication, the importance of communication in your research and presentation. Why is it important in research? Now we talk about organization. If you really want to be understood, then your thought, your words, your presentation, your research should have a organization. No words. Now, I mentioned a while ago, we communicate through verbal. Verbal is the uh, words that we utter. We communicate to visual 
your visual example is your text message, email, WhatsApp messages, or your research. Now let's go to the nonverbal cues, okay? So I always incorporate this to my lectures and trainings and presentation, the no words. I What I simply mean by no words is just your nonverbal cues, your eye contact when you speak about your research or when you promote your research. So eye contact is very important. Your facial expression, you move with purpose, your gestures. Okay, so that is nonverbal or no words. Friends, the truth is our body speaks too. So your nonverbal cues, your movements of your body, that is where people will understand your message. Next one, filler words. <laughs> what is filler words, okay? You may not have these filler words in your writing or your research, but when you talk about your research later on, when you have your research or your book, then filler words, you should eliminate this. Now, if you, if your first time to hear this word, filler words, just ask question to our moderator, what is all about, and she will forward that question. What is really filler words? Filler words, is it really bad? Do we need to avoid it? Yes. Filler words, when you present your research later on, words like um, yeah, so, ah, uh, that is filler words, and it's annoying. Remember, when you present your research, you should be there to be clear, concise, and sometimes it affects your integrity as a researcher. It seems that you really don't know what you're saying. So let's say your research is about the importance of education, right? And you're discussing the importance of your education. And this is my research. This is the importance of education. Uh, the importance... Uh, do you think they will believe in you in your research? No. So avoid filler words. Okay. So I would like to move on to other aspect of communication. So what we're trying to say here is I really wanted to convey to you what is communication really? What is the underlying uh, impact of your communication? What is behind communication? <laughs> This is communication, the front of my palm. But behind that, what is really communication? Because if you really don't understand what is communication all about, and then it's difficult to communicate. It's difficult to coordinate. Okay, next one, ideas. There you go. You develop your idea into speech, but first you develop that idea, putting it into your research. Again, when you outline your research, you outline everything, your speech, there's only three main parts in mind. Opening, body, conclusion. Opening, body, conclusion. So do you develop that ideas? Your ideas is your great way to your communication to your uh, other people. Okay, that opens the gate to communicate and coordinate. Now, diversifying vocals. Now, if you finish your research and you are given the opportunity to present it, your vocals is very important when you present your research. Otherwise, people will not go to understand you. So your vocals, that includes your volume, pitch, the rate, quality. So how are you going to diversify all these vocals? You rehearse your practice so volume it refers to the loudness pitch is it high or low and this is the most important here rate we speak too fast that people don't understand us particularly if english is our second language when we speak english we speak too fast why because in our native language, we already speak to pass. Let's say in Hindi, and then you speak English. 
So rate is very important how fast or slow you speak so that they will understand you very well. You may have a good research, but the moment that you present it and you speak too fast, do you think they understand you? No. Going back again to your primary purpose as communicator, your primary purpose is to be understood. Now, quality. Are you natural speaker? Are you confident speaker? Not just because you're a speaker, you just say what you want to say. No, you need to make it sure that you are clearly understood right now. I'm making it sure that every one of you understand here. Unless you're doing something else, writing something or texting, then understanding and listening is difficult. Okay, so that is diversifying vocals. Next one, this is my favorite part, the evaluation. Evaluation is also known as feedback, opinion, what else? Judgment, what else? Anything, what you can say about evaluation, okay? So we receive feedback or evaluation on our research. Remember that on the book that we were published we receive evaluation but that's okay that's normal you need to accept feedback and evaluation for your own growth for your own progress and improvement now don't take it serious uh personally if you receive feedback oh i did not understand your research your wordings are not too clear for me that's okay accept it don't take it personally but take it with open arms and open mind and that's where you're going to learn okay so remember you're always going to get feedback or evaluation from people from your listeners from your readers from your student okay but i next one practice in writing you need to practice in speaking you need to practice practice makes progress you progress because you always practice right at first if it's your first time to do your research it's not really good but the second time you gain confidence it's better than the third time when you do it it's excellent it's because of that practice. Consist consistency of doing something will give you progress. Okay, so necessary practice. Keep, keep writing your research. Keep improving. Now, telling your story. This is where communicate communication takes place when you tell your story right tell your experience so you are a messenger of your story your message so in your research also tell your story because storytelling will make a greater impact and when we say communication, the importance of communication is to connect. That's why if a while ago, I mentioned to you, many communicate, but very few connect. It's because they don't know how to share their feelings, their emotions. They don't share this story. So always tell your story. Okay. So I'm going to read something about what I wrote in my book about the importance of communication and everything. And this time I'm I'm including everything, not just in research, because I always believe that a writer should speak 
and a speaker should write. They are connected to each other. Okay. So when we communicate well, we can begin and maintain a strong relationship. At work, that can result in a higher productivity in happier workspaces. At home, it can mean deeper connections to your family and friends. Okay. So being able to communicate well is one of the most important life skills. Okay. On a personal level, think of how it is needed to settle a disagreement between two neighbors. And on a global level, to negotiate trade agreements between countries. So that is how communication is very important. Okay, poor communication, if you have a very poor communication and you don't communicate well, will lead to cyber break, breakdown and cooperation. And ineffective communication results in disagreement, misunderstanding, mistrust, and general disinterest, particularly in your research. So if you are a researcher, writer, you will get feedback the moment that you start speaking. So be very careful. Okay. Excellent communication. Build trust. Once you build trust, then they will patronize your research, your books, or any project that you have. It's because you're a good communicator. In my organization, in Toastmasters, we always say this. A great leader is a great communicator. Now, put it into the perspective of a writer. A great writer or researcher is a great communicator, right? Just take that perspective. Excellent communication, as we mentioned, build trust. You strengthen your partnership. When we say you strengthen your partnership, you build networking, you build relationship to other people that will going to support your research, your book, your anything that you write. And of course, again, clear communication reduces conflict. Okay, so it's given. You want to be able to understand others and be understood. So in communication, in presenting your research, you want to be understand and you also be able to understood. Okay, the biggest compliment on communication is when someone hears you demonstrate being interested and finds you an interesting person. Okay, so that's the goal. Now, Effective communication is the exchanging of information and ideas, and effective communication involves understanding the emotions and purposes behind the information, your research, and your ideas. Okay, so those what I'm reading from this book that I published three years ago. And this book is all about communication, research, presentation, and how to convey your story how to be a confident speaker presenter because i always believe i always believe and i'm going to mention this again a writer should speak and a speaker should write okay there are three Keywords that I'm going to mention to you to be an effective communicator. And this will help you in everything you do, including your research. Number one is awareness. Number two is practice. Number three is time. APT. 
Okay? Awareness because we should be mindful of the words we speak to others. Awareness because we should be mindful of the words we write. Particularly in your research. Be mindful of your words. So that is awareness. Practice. Necessary practice. We already mentioned this a while ago. Because the best method of effective communication need to become natural. So the words you use in your research. So it takes practice. In time, of course, because meaningful messages should not be rushed. When you speak too fast because you're rushing, they will not understand you. Believe me, my friends. Okay. Now, how much writing do you do every day? How many research do you do every day? And also, how much speaking do you do every day? And how much listening you do every day? Okay. And how much reading you do every day? Those are part of your journey to a better communication. Okay. So next is confident messaging. Your research is your message to the world. And confident communication requires learning some skills. And what are those skills? Your writing skills, your speaking skills. You will be noticed more if you are a great communicator. It's because you speak direct, concise, Clear. Same with true. You write direct, clear, and concise. Okay. So tell your story. How are you going to tell your story? Be the messenger of your story. If you really want to make a greater impact in your research, then start telling your story. Now, fellow educators and students, we discuss what is communication all about, the importance of communication in your research, in your verbal, in your visual. We discuss about organization, how organized you are when you write and when you speak. We discuss about no words because our body speaks too. And the filler words, when you start presenting your research, then if you want to be perceived as a person of integrity, then eliminate those filler words. Your ideas, you are already there. When you write your research, you are conveying your ideas. Okay. And then your vocals, you diversify your vocals. Okay. What else? Telling your story is one that will make a greater impact later on. Let's move on. This is my favorite from Epictetus. First, learn the meaning of what you say or what you write and then you speak it. So, uh, to be able to be understood clearly, then you need to learn the words you are using. There's no point of writing words in your research if you yourself don't understand the meaning of that. Okay. Now that everything can be Googled, you, you read the meaning of the words, but most important here is you understand the meaning of the words in your heart. This is what Epictetus mean in, in this quote. You need to learn, understand what you want to try to say to the world, and then you speak it. Okay. Lastly, 
I believe I still have 10 minutes, but I would like that 10 minutes for question and answers because I always believe that meaningful communication should be ended with questions from the audience. And regardless of which language you speak in, okay? That's why I asked in my the start of my presentation less than an hour ago, how many languages do you speak? Now, regardless of which language you speak in, you need to be confident. Confident on everything you do. Okay, so this is the book that I wrote. Say it loud, say it proud. And this is all about confidence in writing and communicating. So that's why we discuss C O N F I D E N T because I want you to be confident. The moment that you master being clear, direct, and concise, and of course, confidence is very evident in constant doing things. You build confidence when you do things more than once, thousand times maybe. So that ends my presentation. Not really end because we will try to get questions for a few minutes. Now you can contact me if you have any question with this presentation. My name is Bon Eric Tandok. I'm in Facebook, my Facebook page at Bon Eric Tandok DTM. I'm in LinkedIn, Bon Eric Tandok DTM. I'm in Instagram at Bon underscore Gambit. You can email me confidently speaking institute at gmail.com or you can visit my website www.bonerictandok.com okay thank you mr uh, mr honorick you have explained very nicely about the communication creating a community through excellence and receiving the message Communication builds relationship and connect others. Communication is a sense of life and the communication is the basis of coordinations. And it was very nicely explained by you. Then uh, that communication is the affluent working relationship. It is the basis of decision making. And uh, writer must speak and speaker uh, can write as they are interconnected to each other. So uh, what I think is you have related uh, very clearly about the communication and the what the person wants to speak and want to express himself or herself. And your uh, presentation was, I think, masterclass. Yeah, because it was explained in very nice way and you were engaging which was memorable i think everyone has understood about the co communication now i open the platform if someone has query regarding communication or if anyone wants to ask something I think it's very clear. If there's no question, then it's clear. <laughs> I hope it's clear. <laughs> yes, hope yes, it yes. <laughs> yeah, you explained very nicely. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Thank you for your incredible information and engaging presentation. So uh, now I'll be inviting our second speaker. Uh, she is Dr. Am Amarinder Kaur. Uh, she has received her BTEC degree in electrical engineering from Punjab Technical University. She has done MTech in power systems and she completed PhD from Punjab Technical University. She has more than 18 years of experience in teaching. She is associate professor in Department of Electrical and Electronics Engineering. Faculty in Manav Rashna International Institute of Research and Studies, Faridabad. She has 25 research papers in various scopus, SCI, and international referred journals. Her main areas of interest are artificial intelligence, power system, intelligent control, 
Welcome, ma'am. Welcome, uh, Dr. Amrinder Kaur. The platform is all yours. Thank you, Dr. Itcha. I'm audible? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'm going to share my screen. Clear now, and screen is visible. Yes. 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 Thank you. A very good evening to all of you, and very good morning to Eric sir. <laughs> my, presentation, <laughs> my presentation is today on research paper writing and publication with indexing. So first of all, why we need to write and publish research papers? If I'm going to speak about ideal in an idealistic way, then we need to share our research finding and discovery with the hope of improving our knowledge base. But practically, if we go with the uh, human instinct, then practically we need to do this to get the funding, to get promoter, to get recognizations for knowledge sharing and the achievements. All of us are now familiar with ranking and all your indexing and all those. For this thing, we need to write and publish our search papers because you are rated by what you produce, not by what you attempt. You need to tell the people that you are doing this. You need to tell them that you are working on this area. You have find out this. You need to tell your discovery to the world also. So in today's world, it is very, very important to write and publish your research papers. When we are going to publish papers, how we can get a paper published? First of all, we need to uh, have a very competition uh, in the journals. There is really a competitive word in the journals nowadays, specifically if we are going from indexing journals, Scopus or SCI, or you can say expanded ESI, in all those journals, the competition for space is quite intense. Then the cost of publication is quite high. With the open publication, the cost can go up to even thousand or one hundred, one thousand eight hundred dollars in an open index journals. And along with that, another major problem with the searcher is that the rejection rate is also high. Few journals in the science and nature publication have a rejection rate of nearly ninety percent. In journals, few journals have a rejection rate of 50%, say, or few journals have a rejection rate of 65%. But in uh, good journals, having science and nature, they have a rejection rate of nearly 90%, which is quite high. So this can even deter your spades for uh, publication of your papers. But by following few guidelines and by choosing few uh, guide, uh, rules, you can publish your search in the good journals. Now, these are a few tips when you're going to publish in a journals. First of all, know the journals. Must know its editors and then submit the papers because the paper, journal area and editors must be familiar with your search area. That is quite important because at the first point itself in the research paper, the editor go through your papers. If we find it suitable for the journals, only and only, then he will allow it for the peer review. So first step is you must know about journals and the re, uh, area of research area or your can, you can say the specialization area of his, his editors. Then you need to submit the papers. Then whenever you're writing papers, it's going to be a global thing. So you need to pay close attention to your spellings, grammars, and punctuations. Even a comma or a full stop can simply change the meaning of a sentence. So please pay close attention to spelling, grammars, and punctuations. Then in the end of the each papers, we write references. These references must be comprehensive 
and this must be accurate because when you quote these references in your paper then if someone reading that paper go to that reference that that the person must be able to retrieve that paper and must be able to understand the paper then avoid careless mistakes you can't rewrite few sentences you can't uh, do careless mistake because it's a research is the hard work which you have done to find out the things which others are not able to conclude or find so please avoid careless mistake when you are going to publish right then read and confirm to in section for authors each journals have in section set for the authors in which they prescribe the formats and in few journals they also give the flow of the papers in which papers you need to write down the in which flow you need to write down the papers your instruction whether it should be a two column or a single page or double page and how many uh, figures must be there how tables are going to be quoted in there everything is there in section of authors so you must read and confirm to this in section papers to minimize minimize the rate of rejection for your paper this is very very important because either you need to publish or perish that is the truth in today world if you are going in academia you are going to survive in academia then you need to publish your research that is very very important and most important thing you need to publish it on the timely in today world research is very very important and further publishing is more important than that so how we can say what work should go for the publication what constitute a good science where which thing you can send for publication the first characteristic of that research or your science is your novelty the research paper must adhere to some novel idea there must be something new and not zabbling something formally known or used okay it can be novel but not important that is more important when you are going for research novelty is more um, uh, important or it, it is highly rated as compared to importance because importance depend upon person to person or maybe that idea may be not be relevant in today today that is not important but after a few years or after a few months that may become important so novelty is more highly rated as compared to importance of topic then next one is your you can next when you are trying a hypothesis when you are doing some research most of the times the search started with your hypothesis you take a uh, is your assumptions then you test that against the reality and then accordingly you prove that right or wrong as per according to your search standards so you need to determine the fundamental process involved in testing your hypothesis because either you prove your hypothesis right or you prove that hypothesis wrong so you need to write down the flow or for that you must be responsible if you are saying something that must be stated with the facts and logics so this fundamental process must be involved having for anything we are saying action reaction or other natural phenomena must be uh, established with the facts must be established with the logics otherwise it is not going to be accepted then descriptive when you are saying something we are saying something new so that means it is already not in the books or somewhere else so the person who is going to read your paper that person is reading a new thing so you must be able to convey your idea clearly to that person so your work should be descriptive you must describe how the things are but does not test how things works so in that case hypothesis are not tested but you describe the things 
in a proper lengthy way it could lead you long discussion but your discussion should, should be precise when you are going to publish there are bloom taxonomy for the publications you can write down either on these bloom taxonomy levels the level first one is your evaluations in that case you are going starting from your base id that is your knowledge you start with your knowledge then comprehensive then you apply that then we analyze that then you synthesis that then do in the last of that you go for the evaluation these are the six parameters for the bloom taxonomy when you are going for the publications so first level is your knowledge base when you are going to write something about any topic or any area of research work then you must have a wide base knowledge about that topic you need to do some literature review to recall the informations all the data is available till now about that topics to do a discovery you observe that you list out that you locate from where search papers you have find out that, that data then you tabulate that data you name that data what you so ever you have done if you have done a theory work then you write down the those theory names if you have tabulated the data then you tabulate that if you have done some observations you write down that so in the first step of bloom taxonomy publication you write down your knowledge now from this knowledge you understand now you translate this knowledge into work you summarize this then to present this in form of your research paper you demonstrate the same when you are demonstrating the same if you are using a theory then this lead to discussing also so these parameter understanding translating summarizing demonstrating and discussing all this comes under the second level of your taxonomy that comes your comprehension then you go to apply that so once you have gathered the knowledge now you have translate that you have summarized that next one thing is you are going to apply that knowledge in your research you are going to find something new by applying that application you are using that knowledge uh, you are using your problem solving method you might be inventing the new method right then for doing that same also you need to write down some data that may constitute a manipulating or you may need to assume certain data that comes under designings then you do play with that data and all those parameters which you have collected which you summarize that is experimenting so application the third level of your bloom taxonomy is uh, involves the applying and using of your knowledge then using for that also for problem solving method then once you have done the application of your work then you need to analyze this what have you done whether that is right or wrong what you can conclude for that for that purpose analysis is very very important so you do the analysis of that for for doing the analysis you identify and analyze the patterns you have apply your knowledge on the data so or something on your work you will uh, find out the similar patterns if there are any in the data or you may find out any way in different patterns right then do organize you conclude from that similarities or dissimilarities then you recognize the trend and you find out that these are similarity or these are the dissimilarities or you can conclude even from a similarity based upon your research work or you can even conclude from dissimilarity the search is also about the when you say you are going to say no to something it is not about we are going to find something say this i find out a search can be this also that i am not able to find out this this is not going to exist that is also your search work you have proven that 
this cannot be find out so search cannot be only about yes it can be about the no also so you identified the irregular patterns that can also lead to your research result by recognizes those dissimilarities you can find out a trend and then lead to your research work then the next pattern the next taxonomy level is your synthesis now based upon your work and collaborating that with the already existing ideas you synthesize this project do your work you create new idea you eliminate something from the previous work add your new novelty or you add your new extension work to the previously existing work that is your design and invention you may even lead to composing also a new idea or a new theory imagining is also there then inferring you are going to find out something from there modifying already discuss you are going to modify the already existing idea then predicting you may predict something based upon the data analysis that is a major part of the research work prediction is very very important part of your research and you may combine the idea also as already discussed previous existing idea you add on with that you do your work and then you can Uh, lead to a new idea. This level is known as synthesis. We have done your work. Now synthesis has been done. The last parameters of your Bloom taxonomy of publication is your evaluation. This is the last part of generally your search paper, where you are going to conclude what you have done. In case of any thesis or your dissertation work or a research paper. this is what is important whatsoever you have done you applied your knowledge you have just summarize it you have applied it you analyze it then you synthesize this now you need to evaluate what you have done what whether you have find something conclusive we have, you need to compare the ideas where your idea is going to be stand it is going to be accepted by other people and if it is going to be accepted it must be accepted with the facts you need to evaluate the outcomes what you find out by solving you need to solve all the previous work then judging these you need to analyze your results then analysis on that we need to recommend your research you are going to improve certain accuracy of certain things then you need to tell them that you have judged this the accuracy of your theory and it is going to be proven right and you need to recommend this the facts that comes under the evaluation evaluation generally summarize your work knowledge is the start you start with your knowledge you start with the search in the area where you have knowledge and you conclude your research with the evaluation of your knowledge in that area by concluding a new theory or some novel work which can be published so whole of this research work publication is summarized between these six bloom taxonomy levels elsevier one of the leading publishers in the search papers it advise you to choose the right journals just simply do not descend the stairs right you need to find out a specific journals top journals constitute nature science lancet lancet is a medicine journals nature is mostly dealing with the engineering and biotechnology science is generally with the your uh, applied science and other areas emerging science areas NEGM is also in engineering and uh, normal social work and management journalism areas. From these journals, find out the field specific top journals. Just I have discussed that nature is in biology, Lancet is medical. Nature is also dealing with the AI and your latest science areas. 
So choose your field specific top journals. Once you're done with your research, then go to other field specific journals, then go to national journals. Relate your search with each and every one, then go for publication of your work. So based upon this advice, if I'm going to find out the journals, then how I can define what is a good journal? I'm going to publish with indexing. So that means I'm going to find out a good journal for publication. How I'm going to find out a good journal? One factor is your impact factor. Impact factor is average number of times published papers are cited up to two years after publication. Citation, my friends, is why very, very, very important. Once you have written something, the other person need to cite it also. That will increase your visibility rate also. It will show how much you, your research have helped other to find out the new research conclusion. And it is it will also help to find out, uh, to increase your uh, score, in, uh, increase your visibility as a researcher. So when you're going to publish somewhere, find out the impact factor of a journal. Then immediacy index. Immediacy index is basically average number of time published papers are cited during year of publications. This is very, very important. Uh, this will improve your visibility. And again, your paper will be uh, more visible, your search will be more recognized. Lead time or incubation times. Average time taken for paper from receipt to publications. A good journals take near about a time of one and a half year. I know this is disheartening, but again, the review process is so severe. It is peer review journals. So it generally take for essay paper for one year to one and a half year also. But nowadays you can easily find out the time taken for publication from the uh, sites of the journals. They generally give you time, the time taken for first decision, then sec second decision, third season and acceptance. Mostly four parameters are there. Uh, Normal journals, scopus journal can take up to three to seven, eight months. Only and only essay takes more time. But there are a few journals, essay journals also there. Those take less time. So you can, you need to take care about this thing also. That if you are in a hurry to publish your research, you may need it to complete your PhD or some other work. In that case, this time is very, very important. So you need to take care regarding this also. Then if you're going to publish somewhere, then it is important that that journal, or if it is a book, you may publish your work as a book chapter also, then it must have ISSN number. ISSN, ISBN number is recognition of any publication work. Without this number, a work is not considered a published. So it is a international standard serial number. It is a unique number. Each and every journal or your book, wherever if you are going for publication your book chapter, then each and every one has this number. This is very, very important. So these are characteristics of your good journal, which are required when you are going for publishing your research. Journal citation reports. Based upon this, you can say the nature journals have an impact factor of 30.979. This is a highly rated journal and immediacy index is 6.679. Then after this science is coming 29.162 and with immediacy index of 5.589. Hypertense have a impact factor of 5.630 and immediacy index of 0.838. You can see with a drop in impact factor, there is drop in immediacy index also. AJP Hearts have a impact factor of 3.658 and immediacy index of 6.675. If 
Fizuacil reveal heavy 36.836 and immediacy index of 3.727 because it is a journal with the stylosy. So impact factor is high, but immediacy index is low. Because when you're going to publish this, when you're going to refer this, then in that case, uh, theories, reference is something which you are generally not counted as. Uh, MAG match have impact factor of 0.962 and immediacy index of 0.122. And math has a impact factor of 1.505 and immediacy index of 0.564. These are few examples of journals having a good impact factor and also with some few poor impact factors. So you can compare this that how impact factor immediacy index is going to impact your publication or your research if you're going with this type of journals. Now, if we have chosen the journals, now you're going to write the paper. Now you need to consider few things before writing. I understand I'm going to write there, I'm going to write at this level. Right? Then I need to find out how much time I have to write time to write the paper till that time if that work has been already published because most of the people are working in par parallel on the same topic also you might not be knowing also right so you need to find out always the latest paper to work say i'm going to write something in 2023 in that case i need to refer the paper on the topic written till 2022 because by studying those papers i will be able to find out that whether my work has been already written out or not how much significant advancement has been made whether the work i am doing is important is this future work or is this a past work it may have been already done so you need to Find out this, that how much advancement has been made on the topic. So always refer to the last year, till the last year papers on the topic. It is good to refer last 10 year papers, not beyond that. When you're doing any research, only refer to last 10 year paper. If it is not that much historical work. For science work, it is important. For historical work, you may go for up to 20 years. Even beyond 20 years, the search work is not. If you're going to very basics, only that is important. Then is the fourth hypothesis straightforward? What you assumes, what your theory you're going to prove, is that straight? The person must be able to understand. Did the experiment test the hypothesis? You need to prove experiment to write or wrong your hypothesis control appropriate and sufficient on the work you are doing you are uh, solving this you are applying logics you are uh, establishing the facts with the theories properly can you describe the study in one or two minutes because if you're going to present your paper in some conference or somewhere else you must be able to uh, describe the study in one or two minutes. The person must be able to understand this. And if you are going to write down this, then the, your must, research must be able to conclude in one or two sentences. Because those who have the most to say usually say it with the fewest word. You say this is zero. Zero means nothing. Just conclude it. Just say it with a few words. Then, once you're done with this, then you need to choose the journals. Yours, because reviewer must be able to understand your area. He must be related with your area. Only and only then he or she will be able to understand your work. 
quality of general impact factor already discussed you need to take care regarding this because we, you have put up your hard work in your work research so it is very very important to choose a quality journals with a good impact factor so that your search work is good and it could be reach out to most of people then tentative title and summary the title of your search work must be attractive we will discuss these topics in detail in the further ppts how you can design your title how you can summarize this has considerable work been done to warrant a publication this i would already discuss that you need to understand that what you have done that is important it is worth publication it has not been already published and it is though in few searches a small work is also important but you need to relate it with your area you need to find out that your work is worth a publication you have done something that is going to be important that is going to be published aim and scope of a journals when you are going to choose a journal aim and scope must be consistent with your search work it must go with your definition it must go with your area that is important otherwise at the initial stage itself you may got a rejection email that your work or area is not in sync with your journal right it may be disheartening but so to avoid this at the first step itself simply choose a journal with your proper aim and scope which is relating with your search work so we are done with while we are going to take care about these things how much work we are going to do how we are going to do this work how we are going to publish this work so we are going to start writing the paper so hardest part is getting started we are going to kick start that is the most important things after that it is simply gear brakes acceleration you need to first start up everything so when we are going to start then we need to publish this work we need to first write down to the paper journal papers so we need to communicate with the editor then we need to communicate for the few journals by writing letters for few journals we need to communicate by using science and technology articles few journals require short communications they simply give you submission link you need to simply submit there and then after that communication is there in reference to that numbers few journals require your technical note or case study for publications few journals required original papers or research papers some journals also go for review papers or brief notes and then there are book chapters there are book reviewers then monographs and books are also published then stp papers theme papers in special issues are also published then online journal papers are also published where there is no offline uh, journal uh, article is available only online are there these are more popular nowadays whenever you have, you have started with this you are uh, corona after that after covid these are more popular online journal paper articles so if we are going with these type of journals we need to start writing our work so what are the main parts of a original research we need to have title abstract keywords introduction methods result discussion acknowledgement and references next step is how you are going to order these things 
title then after that up second keywords and write down in the same way same paragraph then introduction then you're going to discuss the methodologies then result then discussion acknowledgement and the last you comes a reference we will discuss one by one how to write down these top titles abstract and each and every part of the paper one by one now onwards we will discuss these to write down a result a search paper with the impact which has a minimum rejection rate so first thing we are going to decide with your title we need to find out a title which will lead to more recognition because the title is what which will determine whether my paper will get read or not so all please avoid long titles that is something which is not required you need to avoid the abbreviations also uh, for example one of the important nowadays thing is that we are going to write down something ai artificial intelligence it is quite a thing we write down uh, short abbreviations for when we are going to write down the titles avoid this because a person uh, for example who is uh, familiar with those, this ai artificial intelligence that person may be able to understand that abbreviation but the person who is not able to relate uh, is not related with that area he he or she will not be able to understand that abbreviation and your main concern or your main motivation is to send your search to reach to the maximum people right if you must write on paper there someone who is not related with the area must be able to understand so avoid abbreviations write down a clear title so you can see example of these title formats the effects of heat on ice heat melt ice the role of heat in melting ice out of these if i am going to find out the last one is lengthy the role of heat in melting ice but it is something which give me a sense of research work if i am going to compare the three sentences then it is something which can it was a crusty within me that something new must be written in this topic heat melt ice all of us know about this right so it cannot it is short i understand this but it is not something which can erose my crusty so you need to find out the title which is erose to crusty of the uh, person or upcoming uh, researchers for writing your work for reading your work the people must be curious to read your work that is the most important thing so title is something which will determine your worthness of your research work next comes your abstract most of the journals give you the availability of abstract the whole paper is generally available only if you have for same you have your you can say uh, your library have access to that journals or you are part of that organization or something like that in that case uh, they give access to full papers or if you buy that paper because in certain journals you need to buy that papers if you want to access that paper so uh one of the key thing that is you are uh, available uh is abstract abstract is critical part of the paper from by reading your abstract the person may decide whether he need to buy the paper or not buy or whether he should go to read your paper in detail or not it is simply some something gist of your paper so it state your main objective it summarize most important result in the last two lines always on the research abstract you write down that this has been done this will be uh, and this is lead to this cons uh, cons 
the state major conclusion and significance and avoid economics in this that is important write and rewrite until flawless because this is important so you need to write rewrite write rewrite few journal only ask for abstract first if they read now read your abstract and ye this it is able to raise the curiosity then they will go to ask for your full paper they simply rejected abstract level itself also so write and rewrite it as many times unless it is flawless provide the right keywords for indexing along with the abstract there are keywords those are the main key points of your research you need to write down for the indexing also those work then after abstract the introduction comes the introduction is the main part of your paper it is not something which is available as a free part it is part of the main body main search papers it is the first main part of your paper so it is important so in this case we need to build case for why study is important or necessary you introduce your topic why you have done this work what work has been done till now you provide a brief background then for your research state hypothesis a central question or theme the your work which you are going to do give a paragraph about what the investigation proposes to do what you are going to do that you need to introduce in this paragraph itself you need to provide why the study is important you need to provide what has been done till now you need to provide what you are going to do in this case so introduction summarize these main parts then theoretical considerations uh in few papers you might need it right uh so you sometimes you need this section sometimes you don't need this because certain papers theory need to be explained or you need to build up a new theory also if you are using already the previous uh, available theory then you need to refer that you theory or there are, so for that purpose you need to write down this portion give relevant formula whichever you are going to uh, refer whichever you are going to use uh, uh, based upon this formula if you design any theorem equations uh, so you need to define out these uh, with relevant equations the symbol must be well defined you must write down if you are going alpha alpha is this gamma is this and beta is this and you write down the equation in number form equation number 1 equation number 2 because in further part of paper if you are going to refer those equations then do you must write down the equation number this equation number that so that is very important so you write down the number those equations or theories in sequence discuss parameter to be evaluated so you will write down from this equation this will be find out and we will evaluate this further then you need to justify your choices it's not so you can arbitrarily choose any variable you can take any alpha beta gamma or x y z anything like that it is not that like that you need to justify your choices why you have taken these parameters it is okay if you choose too many parameters right if you imagine few values but up to a certain things Okay, the things, uh, the parameters or values can be imagined, or it can be chosen. Let's take the value is equal to x. Let's take value is equal to y. But you can assume, you can't assume anything like that because ultimately it's a research work. So you need to prove your hypothesis. You need to prove your research. So theoreticals must precede your experimental details or methodologies sections. before you are going to explain your method you must explain all the theories used in those methodologies if any 
properly in this section practical consideration must be there if you are going for uh, proving your work with the theories then comes your material and methods this is where your experiment is based so this is the methodology or base of your experiment where you are going to explain everything you are going to say i am i have used this this much material and this is its methodology which lead to these result so material and methods will be discussed in this at our section those are used for conducting the experiment or your research work so this is best to begin writing when experiment leads somewhere when you find conclusive result then you are going to write down this uh, topic this section so this must be detailed so that the person must be able to understand and result can be reproduced by the others if someone else want to prove your theory or if they want to test your theory so they must be able to do this so this must be detailed methodology of conducting your research must be detailed reference published methods if you are using that must be referred by writing if you are writing some uh, fact of you using some previous data give a reference number to that and corresponding that reference number write down that article in your references so that is important include regulated use approval information like toxic substance if you are using some substance that is toxic or some property is there then you need to write down that thing also Uh, you can't uh, use illegal things in this for few methodologies or for few values you need even permission from certain organizations so if you are writing down your methodology you must take care that your methodology have a uh, approval from the concerned authority if such is required if such thing is required then your it methodology must have a proper permission that is very very important because otherwise it may lead to uh, uh other law lawful things if your research get published so this is very important when you are describing the methodologies use descriptive subheadings in methodologies you use subsections right so when you using subsections write descriptive subheading for example you are going to describe the materials if it is a science work you need to write down which material we have used then you need a synthesis then you write down the material characteristics so you need to properly uh, give the subheading under this methodology so that methodology is properly clear to someone who is not familiar with the research i'm already i'm again and again emphasis on this work that your research is always new it is not something which is available in this book if i'm not able to some understand this sentence from this book i will go to other book written by some other author so if i'm not able to understand from this author book i will go for other i will understand from that person for example in chemistry too many books are available by this and this and that of author in physics or you can say history also the on the same topics books are available for the many too many authors if you are not able to understand one person's style you can go with the other person's style but in the search it is not so it is your work it is new it is unique it is available with you so the owns on you to make it understand for other persons the other person must be able to understand this so this must you must be clear and descriptive in your research that is important then comes to your results when you are going to conclude your research after the methodology 
then you are some going to summarize the result then images and your equations are very much effective you conclude your work with the search works most of the search is uh, if done in on the software it is easy to take the pics even if it is done in the laboratory support your work with the images with the experiment setup which you have set up and with the equations and table and figures must be straight forward and concise so that person must be able to conclude it is easy to write down data in the tables form so that it is clear it is easy to understand present mean finding referring to tables or figures you are going to conclude something say this from, from table number this and this i am going to we, uh, this has been concluded from figure number this this is clear write this do not repeat result in the paper okay but they must be repeatable and reproducible these must lead to future work that is the main things right these are can be repeated these can be cited these can be referred by the others so these must be repeatable and reproducible you can't repeat the work in the result in the same paper but you can you must be able to deduce next level of your search from this paper so this must be repeatable in your next research work or these must be reproducible by the others if they are using this as a reference for their research so this is very very important when you are going to uh, write down your results error bar and statistical detail these lead to a uh, better better authentication of your research error bars are visual presentation of your search works this makes the result easy to understand and as compared to tabular data these have a more visual impact all of us understand that images have more effect as compared to data so error bars are good to represent your results so table may be in a lengthy form so try to present your results in the graphical form that will give more impact to your work then after the results next thing is your discussion so first you need to answer the questions those you have itself posted in your introduction in the introduction we have already discussed that we will discuss something what we are going to do in, in our research work in introduction we will discuss what we will do in this paper now you have done it you have discussed the methodology you have analysis you have find out the result now you need to answer these questions what we have done in this work in introduction what we will do now what we have done this is the answer so next thing discuss the possible mechanism what we have already applied what can be done what could be done you need to discussion because discussion involve all the features past present future so discuss every possible thing discuss weakness and strengths always find out the weaknesses or your discrepancy in the research work because sometimes you may not be yourself able to improve that the further researcher can improve upon this things this is very important so if you can find out any flaw or something which you are not able to understand or which you are not able to clearly define that write down that your result may have some uh, conflict within your search also highlight also this will help the 
person who is reading your search to understand it. This may lead to improvement also. Explain what is new without exaggerating. Simply write down the novelty of your work, what you have done. Don't say about this blah blah this. Don't repeat discussion or speculate too much. It must be precise. Already discuss. Those have a more impact who say less. So don't repeat discussion and don't speculate too much. The person who is reading your paper, that is also an intelligent one, he must be able to find out, he must be able to deduce the results from this one. Conclusion, conclusion and summary. After discussion, you need to conclude your research paper. Conclude it, summarize it, discuss the perspective of this, implement implication of this, work and you can also even help the other researcher by suggestion for your future work also. So this is the last part. It is a paragraph with maximum to maximum 10 to 12 lines. But this is also important because this will give you give the person who is reading a paper some help also if you are going to suggest a future work. Reference. After that, references are theirs. Whenever you are quoting someone, always reference should be made to that and the relevant reference should be there. The search work which you use in your paper, that should be quoted there. Be selective based upon credibility. Which, which so a paper you are quoting, that must be, be a good paper because they Reference are also important. If some equation we have given and we have referred to that person's paper, so we are going to open that paper also. So it must be something with credible. Reference must be because reference will increase your credibility because what you have done the research, you have done based upon the references. You have read you have read those papers and after that concluded your research. So always read the references before referring. Just don't for sake of writing down the numbers that you're going to write down 40 or 50 search papers in the references. Don't write down those. Always read the references. Do not misquote. It must be in line with your reference. We are quoting your some reference papers. Use that style and format for journals. Each journal have different style for references. So please refer to that. That is very, very important. Some write down the surname and at all, then paper name, then year and all that. Some write down the complete all author's name, then the journal's name, then the year of publication, then page number and all that. Please refer to journal format for correct style and format. If you are going to cite and patent, then pay, cite that carefully. Do not misquit because patent are having IP right intellectual property rights. They are more important. So patent in case of patents, be more careful. Acknowledgements. If for your search, you're getting any funding, then you need to acknowledge that. So in acknowledgement, you acknowledge that funding or if you have discussion with some other person who is not part who is not author of that paper. So you need to acknowledge that person also. So who have contributed in some other way by giving you some proofs or by giving you some other help. Or in that case, you, you are not acknowledging either person is not as an author. So you need to acknowledge that person in this part. Uh, this helps to increase your Credibility in the search area. People know if they're helping you, you are giving also them the their share. So this is very, very important acknowledgement. Technical and secretarial assistant is also important to be acknowledged in this part. So try to acknowledge the people 
here along with your funding and other help whatsoever you have received from other people or other sources then next thing is revise revise and, and revise once you write on the papers by taking care of all these things then thing is this there are mostly two three four five authors in every papers so thing is this all authors should participate only one should be the corresponding author and review order of data presentation should be there polish the writing style by review 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 double check references look for typos generally typo errors are there you need to take care regarding that you need to take care whatever tense is used be consistent and do not switch back and forth in the same paragraph what you did can be in the past tense but you find out that must be in the present tense avoid long passive voices in the technical writing that is important you can't write should have could have in technical writings develop a good writing style read well written articles try to get good writers to review learn from editing changes learn editing and correcting symbols learn proofreading and correcting good copy editing or formatting according to journal requirements avoid plagiarisms copying other papers this is quite important because now around with days plagiarism laws are quite stringent is hard uh self plagiarism i have just used a cartoon to present this in an unexpected development today doris katrin goodwin plagiarized herself right even your own work cannot be republished self plagiarism certain journals do not allow so published and perish if you break ethical rules so take care my friends regarding this thing plagiarism even self should be avoided unless unless it is important to write down it then journal paper ke formats i am discussing few formats those are used uh, american Chem chemical society they use alphabetical order uh, astrological society format ye choose american chemical society format then modern language association they use online writing lab format american ceramic society they write down reference number in square bracket this is very popular even nowadays most of you must have written the papers with the reference in the square bracket then vancouver format in that case ye they write down uh, issue volume page number pp and years in bracket and the nature journals they they refer in the superscripts that is their style so these are the few journal paper formats which you can uh, generally see submission you are done with all these things next important thing comes out to be submission before submission read in section carefully fill out all necessary forms sometime before acceptance these are required for example copyright transfer and conflict of interest right covering page a few journal asked you for the review also so you can suggest the reviewers also confirm receipt follow up communication and acknowledgement this is important because you need to follow up it is your work so obviously you need to follow up it for the publication so that's how is the process of a research paper you can summarize it first you complete your research then you prepare your manuscript then you submit your manuscript then assignment and review is there then decision is there if unfortunately it is rejected you are back to square one completion of research if it is gone for revision then 
you revise it, resubmit it, and go to step number three, submission of manuscript. And if you're lucky one and your work is good, that is simply acceptance and publication. Hooray. Congratulations. Go for publication. Then responding to reviewers. If reviewers ask you questions, revision is there, which is generally there in case 95% papers. Then please carefully prepare your response. Each comment should be addressed. Each change should be stated. Be enthusiastic. You must be ready to answer the reviewer questions. The reviewer may be wrong, but you need to state your point clearly. Be tactful. Thank the reviewers. Do not respond to reviewers while upset because then your response will be like that. And please get, be careful. Get help from other authors. If you corresponding authors, I understand it's now your duty to communicate with that journal. But when you're going to answer the reviews, get help from the authors. Address the corrections to the chief editors. You should communicate with the chief editor only. Then this is how I can describe the reviewers. This is peer review process. You're going to send your papers. They are just ready to hit you. Single blind and double blind review process. Then after this road, after hitting hard, cutting hard, then a paper is accepted. So this is your peer review process. You all need to go through this. So most scientists regard a new streamlined peer review process as quite an improvement. This lead to good publication. That is acceptable. But process is little hard. Then these are this all this was regarding the general papers. Then we come to the conference papers. So conference papers we can describe as uh, certain conference papers are there. Those are going to appear in special issue of a journals. Once they are published, they are uh, presented in conferences. Then they goes to a journal. Again, there is a review process and they are going to publish in a special issue of journals. Then certain papers are there. Those are published as a proceeding. CD or a hard copy. Then there are national conference papers. Those are reviewed. These are reviewed, not peer reviewed. Then your international national seminar papers, national workshop papers, symposium papers, review meeting or society ASEAN presentations. Even these are nowadays published. You can get your work published. What's your noble work you are going to be done. Then technical reports. These can be uh, published also. Theses and dissertations. Few publishers publish these also. Funded project reports and documents. These are published by the organizations. Those are going to sponsor these. And then your consultancy project reports are also published by the organizations. Those are going to fund those projects. Intern reports. These are necessary to analyze any organization uh, work or you can say uh, their annual appraisals or by annual appraisals. PZO UZ project reports. All of us are familiar with these. Students are going to publish those. Mini project reports, case studies and feasibility reports. All these are parts of your search work. All these are part of your search publications. You can publish your search in any form as desired by you. Science Scientific Index, SCI. We have discussed uh, earlier that there are SCI journals. Now, what is SCI journal? SCI is basically a citation index originally produced by Institute for Scientific Information and created by Egwin Garfield in 1960. Now, this is owned by a Thomson Reuter and this covers more than 60, 6,500 uh, journals across 150 disciplines and from uh, it is a norm from year 1900 to the present. So almost I uh, can say 
125 years. So these are described as bird leading journals of science and technology because they have a very hard and rigorous selection process. Indexes made available online through the web of science database. So also CD and printable editions for journals. This database allows a searcher to identify which later articles have cited any particular art earlier articles or cited the articles of any particular authors and determines which article have been cited most frequently, which is available there in the form of H index or impact factor of that author. Thomson Reuters also markets several subsets of this database known as specially cited indexes uh, such as Neuroscience Citation Index and Chemistry Citation Index. Then how you can go to find out these journals with indexing. You can use your RSC journal search engines. You can use Scopus, Thomson Reuters search engine, Springer's link, Science Direct, you can use the publication house like Elsevier, Taylor and Francis, In the Science, IJ Global, NOVA, ASM, ASTM, ASME, Tata, McGree, Willey, Eastern, Pearson, Education, and so on. Other society or organization journal sites or publication house catalogs you can refer. Google and other search engines. Google Scholar is also a good uh, platform to search for journals. Uh, then comes your H index. H index is a journal index also. It is also an author index also. So it attempts to measure the productivity and impact of published work of a scientist or a scholar. It, it, it is related with a person. If your H index is high, that means your authenticity in the science world is high. It is based upon the set of scientists, most cited papers, and number of scientists citation that they have received in other paper publication. So this can be find used to find out the productivity and impact of a group of scientists, such as Department of University of the country. So this is used in ranking. Uh, for example, in India, we are using their ranking, NAC ranking. They were this H index is used. It is suggested by yours each. It is uh, as a tool for determining theoretical relative quality. And it is also known as RS index or RS number. So this is based upon the distribution of citations received by a given research publication. So a scientist has index H. If H of his or her paper have at least H citation each and other papers have at most H citation each, not published H. In other words, if scholar with an index of H has published H paper, each of which has been cited by other at least H times. For example, if your H index is 10, that means you have published 10 papers, which has been cited by 10 times by other authors also. So it reflects both the number of publications and number of citation per publications. Other indexes are your G index. Uh, it was proposed by Eggy as a modification of H index to give more weight to highly cited papers. It is defined as the highest number G of papers that together received G square or more citations. Uh, M could uh, question. So in this paper, uh, original paper, RH is considered the rate of increase of H with carrier length. As you're going to progress in your career, the H index is going to be grow. So he proposed to divide the H index by number of years since the scientist for publication called this quotient M. So this is an index to quantify an individual scientific research output. I10 index, it is the number of publication with at least 10 citation. It was introduced in July 2021 by Google as a part of their work on Google Scholar. Uh, Google Scholar is a search engine which is dedicated to academia and later papers. 
you can refer to this if you are google scholar by name uh, your work will be also available there so the r and ar indexes are now being used recently but g index m index h index these are quite uh, uh, quite early used and these are also more referred and mostly used So in general publication, in general principle, we can say a single metric such as the H index should not be used to rank job candidates, promotion or search grant application because the search performance is multifaceted. So you can use multi indexing to analyze some researchers if you are going to uh, evaluate that person as a possible job candidate or as a promotion or if certain organization, as an organization, you are going to grant the application. Right? So what we can say, all the discussion may lead to these questions. What is it that distinguishes an excellent article from a poor one? The answer can be well defined by George Orwell. All animals are equals, but some animals are more equal than the others. This, my friends, conclude my work. You need to be thoughtful about your search. You need to publish in a good journals so that you can be among the animals who are more equal than the others. Good luck for your work. Thank you, ma'am. Any questions? Thank you, ma'am. <laughs> Your words of research paper uh, were very, very explainable. You explained each and every aspect, how the research can be done. And uh, uh, the words like your research paper should be written. You are rated by what you produce. And today's uh, world is important uh, that you should get your paper published. And no, it's uh, and your work should be unique, and know the generals and the editors and everything was regarding research point by point. You explained, and each and every step was explained that uh, how you should select the title, and it should not be uh, in detail. It should be a very concise one and uh, how uh, what you mean by impact factor how the abstract should be written and uh, how much it should be impressive that how who should study or not that depends upon the abstract uh, that was the detailed discussion by you now i open the platform for the listeners who want to ask any question from you anyone who wants to uh, question Any question from listener side? Dr. Amrinder, okay. I think so. I think so. <laughs> okay. There is yeah. no one. Oh, yeah. <laughs> there is no one. Okay. That okay. was a detailed lecture by you and Thank very you. interesting as well as very nicely explained. And Thank now you. I thank everyone who was part of this virtual conference. And I'm sure that I'll welcome you all again on the board on third day of workshop. Thank you all for attending this workshop.